Good morning, good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning, guys. We're back at it again. That's one, a year since I posted a video. It's nice to take a break and to get back at it. Hannah, Miss Hannah here, my wife, as many of you guys know. Beautiful wife. Beautiful, glorious wife. Would love to start learning how to do more handyman type stuff. So one thing that I really encourage anyone to do is to start to learn new skills in your life. Um, when you learn new skills, um, you become a much more capable person. You become more confident in your ability. And that can translate into all different types of your life. So if you know how to build a house from the bottom to the top, what else can you create in your life? What other amazing things that you can do? So our main house there, um, I had a wealth of experience in terms of construction before I started that. Did I know how to build that house all the way from bottom to top when I started? No, but I learned a lot through the process and it was through doing all the different projects on our property, uh, my experience in the trades over the last 10, 15 years that I've built up this skill set to be able to do that. So we always got to start with something small. Maybe it's something in your backyard, maybe it's something in your house that you can start small that you can learn how to do. Hannah wants to learn how to weld, or I think, you want to learn how to weld? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned how to weld on when we were doing the, uh, the patio, or the deck on uh, outside of our house there. Um, I think it's really important that when you're starting to learn how to do something, to get proper guidance and proper kind of mentorship before you begin. And that can be through learning from someone that's been doing it for a long time, like a journeyman, or it can just be through watching YouTube videos. Now, I'm not an expert on welding. I'm not going to claim to be. I just know enough about welding um, to do it safely and to do it effectively on m minor and basic things. So in today's video, Miss Hannah, we are, what are we going to make today? Mm, incense holder. An incense burner. <laughs> All right. So an incense burner. Um, I've already made one. I did a did a prototype, and after doing that one, there's a few things that I would like to change on it. So we're gonna make another incense burner. I always like making things that are useful and things that um, you can you know see in the house and appreciate in the house as well. So these videos, we're gonna title them, you know, teaching my wife how to you know, do whatever. Maybe it's gonna be electrical, maybe it's gonna be plumbing. Today, it's gonna to be welding. So we're making these videos to hopefully inspire you to take upon some new projects, some new challenges in your life. So if I can do it, anybody can do it, basically. <laughs> if Hannah can do it, you can do it too. I'm, she just, a, I'm just a cook, like a, sh like a not even great cook. So. <laughs> if I can weld an incense burner, you can do it too. <laughs> What else could she do? So like my first welding project was the welding cart. It's the last video that I posted. Nobody seemed to watch it, but it was one of my uh, favorite videos that I've made. Once I learned how to weld that, I've welded many other things. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna do just some basic welds on just a straight piece of metal here, just so that she gets a feel for the machine. And then we'll uh, start cutting some metal, start welding it, grinding it. And then we're gonna have a beautiful incense burner by the end of the video. All right, so Hannah used to work for a Company and she was like the, the was, OSHA the OSHA person and she, I know all the safety stuff all right so <laughs> she's already brought up the point that we only have one welding helmet that's because we only have one uh, so when I was taught uh, by my buddy Orion we both had welding helmets so I could kind of see under the hood when he was welding what was going on so we kind of I don't have that and I wasn't gonna buy another welding helmet just for this video but we do have a camera though, so you could weld it and then I could watch the video. So you can basically, when we're... The welding like spark is really dangerous to your retina. It can make you go blind. So that's a really important thing. Never look at a weld. When somebody's welding, always look away. I know it's always like interesting to kind of like check it out and, and see what's going on, but it'll burn the shit out of your eyes. And something else that is really important when you're welding, not only do you need to have the proper headgear, but you want the proper gloves. There's specific welding gloves that you want as well. And it's always a good idea to have long sleeves and to have pants on and to, for a number of different reasons. Um, if you're welding all day and say you have short sleeves on, not only can you get um, you know, welding slag into your arm, which is not fun, um, but you can also basically burn yourself, kind of like a sunburn, on your exposed skin. So that's why it's really important to cover yourself up and uh, 
You, you, don't, you don't want any of that type of stuff. I also make it a rule when I'm working on stuff. I always take off metal things on my fingers. This is a really important thing, like if, especially if you're doing electrical work. Always take off any rings or watches or bracelets or necklaces, anything that can, can conduct electricity. Take it off because you don't want to be a conductor of electricity. Do you? I can't take out. I've been electrocuted multiple times when I was working as an electrician. It ain't fun. So I have to take off all my jewelry? What did I just say? <laughs> so the basics of welding is that you're essentially sending an electrical charge through the, weld through the welding stick here, through the metal that you're welding, and then it goes back through the machine, through the ground. And so basically you're sending an intense amount of amperage through, it's heating up the steel, and it's essentially kind of fusing it together. It's kind of like when two become... Is like when two people have a baby? When two become one. Isn't there, what's that old song? It's like, a, is it a Backstreet Boys song? When two become one. I don't know, I was a big back. When two become one. Get it on. Sometimes my jokes hit, sometimes they don't. So we've got the Forney Easy Weld 140 MP. That's the, uh, the welder that I got here. And so basically there's a, there's a wire that goes through this. Oh yeah, by the way, if you wanna like really learn how to weld, there's entire channels dedicated to it. I'm not an expert at this, but there are some strategies here You're that we can- You're teaching me, not them. But there are some strategies here that I can teach you. Don't. Okay, so she's worried about it, but I know this is safe because there's no ground. So I can try to weld and it's not actually gonna spark because we don't have a full electrical connection here, right? So you don't have to worry about anything sparking. What does that do, gas? So what comes through this here is a combination of the, the welding wire and gas. So um, I don't know, ex so the gas, does something and it makes the welds much nicer. I don't know. I don't know the exact thing. I just know how it works. What kind of gas is it? So it's like a mixture of it's it's a welding gas mixture. It's like oh, okay. yeah, it's 75 something, 25 something else. So there's some strategy here with the gun. So you can rest the gun tip on your finger here, and you can kind of maneuver the gun like this. You can also kind of bring it back as you want to weld like this. Um, there's kind of different ways of doing it and it kind of depends on you know what you're doing But you want to maintain a consistent distance between the tip the wire and Whatever you're welding to so if you're kind of welding a straight bead like this There's different ways of kind of doing it But you also want to try to maintain around a 30 degree angle like this going into the material So, so you so you don't want to be welding like this and you don't want to be welding like that it's kind so, of like a 30 to 40 degree angle. Okay, hold on, let me understand. So what's happening as I weld? So like, okay, this wire is melting <laughs> yeah. onto, but fusing with this metal. Yeah. So it's like creating like a bead. Correct. And then like, as it happens, more wires coming out. Correct. So you hold the trigger down. When but, you hold the trigger down, wire comes out. Oh, and, like that fast? Yeah. Damn. And so... Do you hold it down the whole time you're welding? Yes. Okay. And so then that also basically tells the machine as well, as well that you're, that you're welding and you want to do that. See, <coughs> I'm not welding anything. I'm just welding a bead on top of this. Yeah. Like there's no you, point to this weld. It's just a Correct. Part. Okay. Right. It's just so that you get familiar with using the machine. Um, then we move on to joining pieces together. So just weld to a straight one. line. J you're at just a welding a straight angle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so there's different methods when you have, you know, different pieces. How quickly pieces. do you move this? So you'll kind of. It's kind of hard to say because it depends on. Well, it seems different like things. the wire comes out pretty damn fast. It does. So you have to kind of move relative. Like you're probably moving. But you're Maybe just going in a like straight this. line. You don't need the like. Right. Okay. See, I'm not even that good at this, but she's asking. Be, she's asking me good questions. Here. Watch, I will be better. Be <laughs> yeah. Okay. That would be sure, funny. Sure. Shit. I mean, we should do. We should do. You do a weld, and then I do a weld, and then the audience rates the weld. All right. Okay, you're gonna do it first. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna lay a bead down so that she can kind of see what it looks like and what how the machine sounds and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get our ground on here. 
So you're gonna look away? Yeah, I'm just gonna go over here. <laughs> You don't have to fucking walk across the garage. You just have to look away. <laughs> well, I know, but there's a lot of sparks. I want to start my hair on fire, All right. you know? So we just got just a simple bead there. Um, you'll notice like, you see, so one thing with welding is it is extremely hot. So don't touch a weld like that after you've done it. It will burn your finger instantly, all right? It is okay. very hot. So you can see like on either side, there's this like kind of a heat ring that goes around it. So that's like kind of the heat penetration that you're getting into the steel here. So what I want you to do is just kind of, you'll put the, you have to take your hat off and maybe your glasses as well. I don't know if that'll fit under the hood here. Get comfortable and then you can kind of like So then you want to use your left hand. Don't grab that trigger yet. You want to use your left hand to like support this like that. And then you can move it around, right? and then you can maintain that angle. So you can keep it closer to this. The gloves are gonna protect you, okay? And then you use your right finger to pull the trigger and stuff. Okay. But don't pull it just yet. Let me get away, okay? So you wanna make- Hold on a second. So you pull, Let me see if I can put my glasses on. Okay. I really can't see. She's blind as shit, so. I'm not blind as shit. Oh my God, my prescription's like a negative three. That's nothing. Okay. I put her glasses on. I felt blind as shit. And then I'm just gonna go Just like that. And so what you'll see, what you'll see under the hood is you'll see the, the red molten steel. And that's, um, I forget what it's called, but um, you wanna keep that at a certain, so if you move too fast, there's not really any buildup. And if you move too slow, then there's like, a, it'll be a big blob. And you just wanna kinda slowly move while you're doing it. All right, have fun. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't really okay. see anything. Well, so you see how much slower I was moving? So you want to let the wire itself kind of build up more. So you're just moving too fast. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Try it again. Snip that off. So you have a nice fresh end there, okay? How come it didn't like... So you got to... Because you weren't, um, I'll look at it through the camera. Oh, because it won't do anything if you're not by the metal? Right. Oh, okay. Because you're creating the electrical connection with that wire. Why is it so thin? So it's so thin because you're moving too fast. Okay, let me try it. So you want to go a little bit slower. So all of this is grounded. So if you're doing so this and like ho this. holding the trigger, yeah, there you go. makes a metal welding table. Just cut the, like, what are we talking about? You're trying to learn how to fucking put a simple bead. There you go. Oh my God. <laughs> These are like size 20, 200 gloves. Okay, hold on. My hands are tiny. There you go. I'm sure this is gonna be entertaining to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already entertained. Oh, fuck. Hold it. Hold that fucking button. There you go. Look at how much better that one is. It looks like better than yours. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's not. It does! You're doing a straight weld. Like this is the, this is, there's no difficulty in I mean, in that this. first one looks horrible, but that last one is like okay. 10 out of 10. So remember, this thing is gonna be hot as shit even all the way probably. Okay, I'm uh, not gonna not that bad. Anything. Do a longer one, maybe about that long. <laughs> it's not straight at all. No, that's fine. I think it's good. So you started off good, and then you're just moving too fast, right? Here, let me do one, and I'll show you another one. So that's the one that I just put down, right? So you, so you can see, fast? so you started off really good. So you can see how big the blob is right there. Okay. And then you're just moving too fast. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. I have water. 
Yeah, I got some right here. You want me to keep going? Keep going. <laughs> so you're still moving a little... Too fast? I feel like I'm going so slow. Okay. So just start it and don't even move it. Just start it and let the... the it never gets red. It always looks green. Well, whatever fucking color it looks to you, it looks red and orange to me, okay? So you start off good, right? And then you're just moving way too fast. So you just see it was getting better there. See how much better it was getting? You just want that to be thicker and you don't want those thin parts there. Because you need the weld and you need that, or you need that material to fill in the weld or whatever you're welding together. There you go, that's much better. So you started off good there, and then you're just moving a little bit quicker. You just want it to be as consistent as you can in terms of the thickness, right? Mm -hmm. But you're doing much better. So Imagine all just this would like, be like watching a child do this. Or no, everybody starts off like this, babe. Nobody comes out of the womb knowing how to weld. What is happening? What, what happened there is you had the gun too far away from the steel. You want consistent movement, but you also want a consistent sound. So like, you want it to be like sizzling bacon. So it's like So when you heard it, it's like Yeah. That means you're a little bit too far away and you just want to move the tip a little bit closer. You heard the sound was much cleaner. That's really good, that's what you want. But you're just moving a little bit too fast. So you're, you had good distance, but you just want to slow down how quickly you're going. Boom! <laughs> Better? It's like fucking perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that's much better. All right, so we've got Hannah stacking some very nice dimes here, so to speak. Dimes? Is that what they're called? Stacking dimes, yeah. That's the cool welder talk. I don't stack dimes yet, maybe nickels or pennies, but not quite dimes yet. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, cut our steel. So I have some leftover flat stock here. Um, I've got lots of metal stock and the great thing about extra metal stock is you can just make fun little things with it and you don't have to go to the store and buy any more. So we're going to cut this um, to nine inches in length and then we're going to take some of our three quarter inch by I believe this is eight eighth inch thick and I believe this is eighth inch, eighth inch thick as well or eighth wall they call it um, and we're going to cut this to nine inches and then we're going to cut four pieces to go around to create kind of like a border for the incense burner and then the actual thing that we use to stick the incense into is just going to be a big old fat weld on the inside so we're going to cut this up big old fat weld, big old fat weld right i can do a big old fat one yeah you can do a big fat one right here right there right there uh, so she's got enough experience with just doing some of these fat welds here, uh, these, uh, just with some of these straight welds. Um, we're not really joining two pieces like at an angle like that and filling it up. Uh, so she's basically just going to do four straight welds. We're going to grind it down nice and it's going to look like a uh, money. Yeah, pretty, pretty nice little incense burner just using some uh, scrap steel. See, cool stuff like this, you can just make gifts for friends and family. People always like handmade stuff that you can make. Um, I mean, that was, your, that was your Christmas present, was that incense burner. And I whipped it up in like 20 minutes, right? And there we go. You love that incense burner, don't you? <laughs> Not really. We're gonna make a nicer looking one, and then this will be your Christmas present, all right? Diamonds would've been nicer. <laughs> We can work it now. Is that how you measure? <laughs> Teaching my wife how to measure <laughs> with a ruler. Well, <laughs> I mean, you can measure me and it'll be longer than nine, right? I mean, I did have to measure like everything to put in the house and like. We'll take our speed square here. That's what this is called, the mm -hmm. square. We'll draw a line. That's where we want to cut it. Handyman pro tip. I always wear, when I'm fabricating stuff, I wear the same hat. Why do I wear the same hat? 
because I always keep my safety glasses on the same hat. So I never have an excuse to not wear safety glasses when I'm cutting steel or drilling steel because I've had a metal sliver in my eye once when I was drilling above into a ceiling, putting up like a, you know, a four inch junction box and, and using like a steel screw. And I got a metal sliver in my eye. It was very uncomfortable, had to go to the hospital to get it removed. I make that mistake once. I always wear safety glasses from now on. So really good investment is a metal or a cold metal saw like this here. The battery powered ones, Makita has one, Milwaukee has one. I'm sure there's some other brands that have them as well. And it's just so much easier to cut with these things rather than using a grinder. Um, I use it to cut conduit, uh, strut, um, smaller pieces of steel, much easier. Doesn't heat the material up nearly as much like say you're using an abrasive saw. So an easy way to make sure that you always get a straight cut is to have your, have your square on it and to just put a little ding in it so you know where you're gonna be hitting it. I just wanna add a little bit more to it and then, we can, and then we can cut it. Beautiful, easy, easy, easy. So we've got this piece, so this piece is nine by, nine by four. So we're gonna cut, the piece is a three quarter inch stock we're gonna go like nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a quarter, and then four and a quarter. So we're just kind of an extra quarter inch. And we're gonna kind of overlap the edges and then just cut off the excess, grind or, and cut it flush, and then fill up any gaps with the weld, grind it, and then grind it smooth. And it'll be very nice. All right, so I'm gonna show you how. Should we have a dust so, gun? No, fucking OSHA queen here. So another thing that you need to know how to do is use your tools, right? So if you're using a grinder like this, take the battery out, then you know that you're not gonna accidentally hit the trigger switch, right? Because if you're trying to change this and you accidentally hit it, not fun. Same thing if you're using like a corded grinder, just unplug it so that we make sure that we don't wanna injure ourselves. So this, this is the lock button. So it locks this into place so that you can't turn it around. Then you take your fancy, fancy little tool here and then you spin it backwards, well left, right? Lefty loosey, ready tighty. Spin that off. This is your cutting wheel. Put that into place. And then we tighten it, so. Put your battery back in. Power. Power. So we're gonna measure out those pieces, cut them quick, and then we can start welding it to our base plate here. Are we doing 45 angle cuts or what? <laughs> Just 90 is fine. Okay. There you go. So that looks, does that look good to you? Mm -hmm. So it, see how it's bowing out just a bit in the center there? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you put a weld here and a weld there. We're gonna take this clamp off, move it to the center, pull that in, then you can finish the entire thing off. But this is like always a good way. You can use this to, like not on this here, but you can use this to check to make sure that things are like perpendicular or 90 degrees to each other. Perfect, look at that. Oh, oh shit. All right guys, we've got our incense burner here. We've got it fully welded, the four sides here. Looks beautiful. 
Yeah, well these are these are practice welds. And so what we're gonna do is I I'm gonna show great. I wanted to keep it. I think it gives it character. But Derek said it. That's one perception. You can say it adds character. I look at it and be like, you stopped one step too short of fabricating um, to something that would look professional, right? Um, so we're gonna grind them all flat. Um, also filled in the welds on the sides here so that she can grind these corners nice and flat and smooth. And then on the inside here as well, I just put in a big old thick bead. And what I'll do right at the end is just uh, drill a small hole into it so that the incense burner can sit in there. And then we've got our finished incense burner. And I can set that right on top and clamp it down here. Cause like when you're grinding, it's gonna be, you know, the material is gonna wanna move. So we wanna make sure that it's nice and secure down. And then raising it up like this allows you to get to the, um, to the corners nice and easy. And when you wanna do the other side, just flip it around and then you're good to go. Hold that, push that in. And then to stop it, you push out. Beautiful edges, corners, and we've got our spot here where we're going to drill for the incense. So best thing to do, I don't have an actual steel punch, which I've got to invest in. There we go. Now we're ready to set the mood. When two become one, right? All right, guys, there we have it. Hannah's first welding project, you made an incense burner. Beautiful, I love it. Put it in my office. Nice thing with this size, so we already made one. And the reason why I made another incense burner before is because we had another one that was like smaller and then all the ash, the ash just got all, all over the table. So I'm like, I'll make something bigger so all the ash stays inside of here. And there we go. Teaching my wife how to weld episode number one. What's gonna be episode number two? Maybe, Who knows? maybe people should vote. Maybe. Leave your comments or leave your ideas down in the description box below and uh, we'll do it up for you guys. Awesome, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.